Overshare? Probably. Hello, it's Thursday. So the channel just turned one and I figured it was time for a little bit of a Q&A session. If this isn't your kind of thing, I still love you. There'll be a crocodile pattern next week. I'll see you then. Okay, so I have a lot of questions to get through. Let's get into it. All right, let me just pull up the list of questions here. What is my favorite book? I enjoy fantasy books. My favorite authors are probably Tamora Pierce, Juliet Morelia, and David Eddings. My favorite movie. All right, uh, it's hard. It's too hard to pick just one, but I would have to go with any of the Disney movies and crime procedurals with lots of murder. <laughs> I think that's everyone though, right? Do I make amigurumi for friends and family? Of course I do. Do I have friends who crochet? I actually have a friend who lives in the same building as me. She lives just upstairs. She and I will relatively regularly get together and do what we call craftenoons, where we basically build a blanket fort on her couch and spend the afternoon crocheting and watching Disney movies, and it's wonderful. What other crafts do I enjoy? I've always been a bit of a doodler. Uh, I've tried my hand at sewing and wish I was better. I I've tried my hand at cross stitch and wish I was better. Oh, and I, I can't forget origami. It's more that I've got like a bucket list of crafts that I'd really like to try. So I've watched a lot of Jackie over at Nerdy Crafter and uh, she's got me really inspired. I want to try some resin craft. I'd like to try some polymer clay. But then I've also got like weirder ones where like I'd like to try and make like a cool paper mache kind of sculpture. I don't know, something about watching people do paper mache on YouTube really inspires me. So I'd really like to try that someday as well. Who are my favorite amigurumi designers? I have a lot whose work I admire but I'll, I might just sort of name drop a couple that have been particularly inspiring to me over the years. So first up, I've got Heidi Bears and the African flower animals she makes, most notably the Happy Potamus. I found that very, very inspiring when it came to designing what I call modular crochet, where I use the puff flowers to build different animals. So she was of particular inspiration to me there. I, and I also have to mention Crafty Intentions. I want to be her when I grow up. I see her designs as like a three course gourmet meal. And I see a lot of what I do right now as sort of happy meals. And so there's there's a long, lot of growth there that I, I think I need to go through to, to be at that level. Where do I buy my wool? Okay, well, I buy my wool mainly at Big W and Spotlight. So for the non-Australians out there, because I believe most of you are from the US actually, uh, Big W is the equivalent of Walmart, I think, and Spotlight is the equivalent of Michaels. I could also be wrong, but that's what Google tells me. <laughs> How did my crochet journey start? Okay, well, there are a couple of stories I could tell about this, but I will go, I'll go with this version. So I was going through a bit of a difficult time after graduating university and basically I started crocheting as a way to cope. I was really, really bad at it though. Not the coping, the, the crocheting. It turns out that my problem, <laughs> sorry, it turns out that my problem was I didn't know the difference between a slip stitch and a single crochet. <laughs> All right, so I didn't discover this until halfway through the project I was trying to make, but by then I was just, I'd put so much effort in, I, I had to finish her and I didn't want to swap stitches halfway through. So I finished her off in slip stitch and uh, well, I kept it. <laughs> She's one of the favorite things I've ever, ever made. She's not my pattern and that doesn't matter at all. So to anybody out there who for some reason is watching this but is just getting started with crochet, I would encourage you to keep the first little creation you make. So I actually remade this pattern a few years later. Uh, I'll insert a photo here. So yeah, this is what it was supposed to look like. A couple of years experience and <laughs> using the right stitch makes a world of difference to what the outcome is. How long did it take me before I took on creating my own patterns? Ooh, I think it was my third or fourth creation. Uh, that's if what you mean is that I, the first time I didn't use a pattern. I think it was a little bit longer than that before I started like actively keeping notes. What was my first design ever? All right, I'll have to use my notebook as a source of truth for this. So this is my first ever pattern book. I believe I've shown it before, maybe in one of my organizing videos, but it's where I used to keep all of my pattern notes. It's apparently the first pattern I ever bothered to really sort of write down and keep was the Colonel Pult. And I I have the Colonel Pult here. This is the, the exact one that I created with that pattern from a game called Plants vs Zombies. So I, I had this guy, I had a cabbage pult and I made a little sunflower as well. I had the full set, but I think this is the only guy that, that I kept. So he was my first ever design. Will I ever show you old patterns? Okay, well, I've actually thought about this one a lot and 
I'm actually really glad that somebody asked it. My answer to this question is probably that anything that I've previously released for sale in my store but haven't covered on the channel will probably never be covered on the channel. This is based on the fact that I think it's fine for me to sell written versions of patterns that I've already released for free on the channel, mainly because I make it really, really obvious on those listings that those patterns can be accessed without paying for them. To me, that means that anyone buying them knows that they are making an informed choice to support the channel or they just, they, they know they prefer a written version of the pattern. Whereas to anybody who has paid for a pattern before it was released on the channel, I don't want anyone to feel like they've been ripped off in any way and that doesn't sort of sit right with me. And so that's kind of how I've come to that decision. But that said, anything that I haven't released at all in any form, it's fair game. It could turn up on my channel at any time. Hopefully, hopefully that answers that question. <laughs> Do I ever crochet anything other than amigurumi? Yes. So I've got a confession to make. I know I talk about the blanket people and the fact that I'm not a blanket person. Um, I am working on a blanket right now. <laughs> it's waffle stitch and basically doing the ankylosaurus re-inspired me. I actually really love this stitch. So look, I ha tend to have a hard time with um, eye contact in social situations. I'm, I'm that kind of weirdo. So I find if I bring something that I can fidget with and look at, it means that I can participate in those social situations without people noticing exactly how weird I am. Overshare? Probably. All right, what was the most difficult amigurumi you've made? Probably Sylveon. I'll pop a photo on the screen here. Now, I don't have any particular memories of why I disliked making her, but yeah, I literally left future me a note that just says, warning, you hated this, don't do it again. So um, I, I guess I have to go with that one there. Based on the fact that I thought the pattern was good enough to write down, but I hated doing it so much I left myself a note telling me to never do it again. <laughs> what is the oddest thing anybody has ever asked you to design or create? That, that one's an easy one. The peanut. <laughs> Next question. What's the favorite piece or pieces that I've ever made? Okay. So I've gone with a top three and they're all my favorites for different reasons. So first up, I have the inside out bunny. And uh, this guy has to be the, the piece that I show off the most often. He just genuinely makes me laugh. And if you want to see why he makes me laugh, click on this link up here and watch the what's inside video. So second favorite would have to be the bumblebee, if only because without that bumblebee, there is no complicated knots. I've talked about that a number of times on the channel. I won't go into it here. So third and finally, it has to be Chonk the baby dragon. Because basically if I could make nothing but dragons for the rest of time, I would be happy. What is the largest thing you've ever made? Oh boy. The giant rainbow llama. So uh, this started as a, how do I get you in shot there lady? So. This started as a llama no drama, but this is exactly what happens when you don't understand how important uh, yarn weight is when it comes to making someone else's pattern. We learned that lesson. She's lovely and soft and she has her own armchair and we love her dearly. What is the most avant-garde thing I've ever created? Okay, I've got an answer for this one as well. This fish. Now you might be looking at this and saying, hang on, that's just a fish. Let me just put the llama down. But yeah, I consider this the most avant-garde creation I've ever made just because I had to create each of these sort of scales separately. Uh, and then I sewed them on individually. I worked on it over the course of about a month. So I really love how he turned out, but I'd probably never make another one just because there's only so much room and to sell him, I'd have to charge over a thousand dollars just to make up for the time it takes to make them. So he is my one of a kind, hyper detailed fishy friend. How do I envision the pieces I need to create for the project so easily? So I had these books as a kid that showed you how to draw things by breaking down what you were looking at into basic shapes and then adding detail to them. I've got an example on the shelf behind me here. Hold on. So there we go. They're kind of like this one here where it shows you how to like break down the griffin and then sort of build it up back into a griffin. And I guess I just kind of do that with crochet as well. But everything in life is just practice, okay? If you're not good at something now, try doing it every day for 30 days and I guarantee you'll see some kind of improvement. Okay, do I have any advice for people who want to design their own? Uh, I assume that's crochet patterns. Um, I have I have too much advice. I am actually currently working on scripting a real step-by-step -step how to design your own amigurumi type video that will mean you have your own pattern at the end of it. But if I have to give one right now, so just one piece of advice, I guess what I'd say is <laughs> everything is just a series of balls and tubes. You've made them before. You just need to work out how to connect the balls and tubes to make the shape you're after. How much time does it take from design to finished project? And what's the process? Whew, okay. 
All right, I'd say with most designs, it takes about four to six hours from idea through to like having a finished piece. The croc I'm currently working on has been putting up way more of a fight than that. And I'm going to be going back to the drawing board. This by the way, would have been the pattern this week, but I'm not quite happy with him just yet. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, he's been more of a marathon of just pure frustration, but I'm sure he'll turn out in the end. <laughs> So in general, I work out what I want it to look like through looking at reference images and doing some sketches and doodles that are, that, that are just don't have to be great works of art. I decide what kind of details are important to me. So on this one here, I thought eyebrow ridges and stripes were kind of the important features I wanted to highlight. Don't know if that'll still be the case by this time next week. <laughs> then I just basically break that down into shapes. So then I just sort of think of those shapes as one slice at a time and build it up row by row. Then it all gets stitched together. And sometimes there's a lot of frogging <laughs> and a lot of spare heads. What is the thought process when developing a pattern? For example, color work and shaping. I think I kind of answered this question a little bit just previously, but I do try to think about what details are gonna give me the biggest bang for my buck. Anything that I put into one of my designs these days, I have to be able to communicate effectively to you guys. So this actually helps me edit out a lot of the sort of fancy ridiculousness I would otherwise be adding to my patterns. Because if I, even if I felt like freehanding something, I may not have a clue how to actually explain what I'm doing. So it, um, it, it helps keep me grounded in reality. Are you releasing any more D&D like crochet videos? Yes. So I'm planning to do a little series at the end of August with uh, three to five D&D themed patterns. So my current list is the Mimic. I'm thinking a Beholder. I'm thinking a Gelatinous Cube and an Owlbear. But if there are any other ones that you'd like to see in that particular series, now is the time to hit up the comments and let me know down there. And I'll, I'll see if I want to sort of add any of them to the mix. What is all the work you have to do every week that we don't know about that you have to do in order to have your channel? Okay. <laughs> Before I answer this question, I want to just state for the record that I am immensely grateful that you all are interested in, in what I have to say enough that my channel is, is what it is. Without you guys, this channel wouldn't exist. So the reason I wanted to start this answer with gratitude is because my answer to this question makes me feel really tired. Do I talk about this in terms of day by day or do I just hit it all up at once? All right, so I upload every Thursday. Sometimes if there's a Tuesday upload as well, but every Thursday is what I'm gonna operate on. So I'm gonna start the, the sort of process on a Friday. So the whole process starts with an idea uh, so I have to do research, sketch the idea. Sometimes I get that idea from you guys voting or contributing and sometimes I just sort of come up with one or I've got a series going and it sort of writes itself. So I then do the designing, which takes four to six hours most of the time, unless we're a crocodile. And I occasionally have to make two, three, four versions of the thing just to test out various bits of the pattern and make sure that they work. But that all has to be done by the end of Saturday because on Sunday I'm filming and filming can take six to eight hours. Uh, so pattern videos specifically take like that full time frame, whereas a video like this takes closer to sort of two or three hours to it, to take closer to two or three hours to film, which is why I am incredibly grateful that you guys sort of let me get away with doing some of this sort of gentler content every now and then, uh, just to help me recover from the rest of the schedule. So I do all of that filming on a Sunday. Right, so when I'm done with when I'm done with filming, I have to also take photos, and so that means uh, product photos for Etsy, as well as photos for the pattern and photos for any thumbnails, as well as any Instagram posts that I want to make during the week. So we do a big photo shoot where I take like proper like orthogonal view type photos, as well as like I try to get a little bit more creative for Instagram. Right, so Monday through Wednesday are all very similar kinds of days. I need to fit in about 12 hours worth of editing, particularly for the pattern videos. They take a long time. I also have to type up the pattern notes because they need to be on the screen during those videos. And that's kind of where some typos have been known to happen. And then I use that same typed up text for the written pattern later. So while the video is exporting, which is often not until late on Thursday night, I'm working on my thumbnails. I'm putting together description text for, the, for YouTube as well as fixing posts for Ravelry, Instagram. Etsy and Patreon. <laughs> I try to get the written pattern all formatted, ready to go out, but often that pattern just isn't ready until a couple of days later. I always get it out by the end of the weekend. I usually get it out by the end of the weekend. I really try to get it out by the end of the weekend. So then I also have to prep uh, descriptions and posts and photos and thumbnails for 
it's all of the things that I listed above. So there's like four or five different platforms that I post on. And I've recently on Friday started trying to do a TikTok as well. That's very early right now and I'm still trying to work out how to fit that into my schedule. All right, so on top of all of that, I also check, try and check YouTube comments every day just because people who are having difficulty with the pattern or finding problems with it because they, are, they exist, uh, tend to leave comments there and I like to try and address them and help people do that. So I check YouTube comments daily. I know I probably miss a couple here and there, but I do my best. I also try to spend a couple of hours every week working on strategy, which can be as simple as literally just sort of plotting what videos to do next or what series I want to do next, what holidays are coming up through to things like deciding to start a TikTok. So yeah, there's a lot of sort of a lot of decision making type stuff going on as well. I also work full time, 40 hours a week. And most of what I've just described there happens between the hours of 6 p.m. when I get home from work and about 10 p.m. when I try to go to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> I'm probably forgetting something. Long, long story short, uh, this is why as much as I hate it, I have to get comfortable with the fact that my patterns have mistakes or typos in them sometimes. I'm really grateful when you guys point them out, so please don't feel bad about leaving me a comment about it. Basically, if I made the decision to try and only put out perfect things, it would mean that I couldn't post as often, and I really like getting to engage with everybody every week. How do I fit that process in with everyday life? I, I don't have an everyday life. What I have is a very understanding partner who's, who's supportive of the time I spend. Before YouTube, what did I crochet and how much? I used to not crochet for months at a time. I think my longest drought was about five years uh, where I just stopped. I, ha I have sort of a number of hobbies that I rotate through. I mean, I've got sort of, I've got origami on the shelf behind me. I like drawing, I like reading, I like gaming. I've got like lots of other things that I used to sort of fill, used to fill my time. But then every so often crochet would swing around again and I'd get really intense about it and, and make things like the fish and then it would just be all out of my system and I would move on to something else. That said, it's always been amigurumi for me. I've ne like, I've had a few moments where I'm just like, oh, I wish I could make a sweater or a jumper or a, that cool fancy blanket that everyone's making. But then I get bored working those same rows of the same stitches over and over again. And for me, the real exciting bit about amigurumi is solving how to make that specific shape and it's sculpting with string and maths and like, what's not to love about that? That's just so cool. But um, yeah, uh, but, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I like trying to not invent new techniques, but discover new techniques that I can use to try and make different shapes and different things and just always be working on something a bit, a bit different. That's just sort of what I love about it. I don't think that answered the question, but that's the answer I'm giving. What made me decide to start a YouTube channel? Well, there's three different answers to this question, but they all kind of are equally as relevant to me coming to the conclusion that I should start one. First up, I'd always wondered if it was something I would be able to do, if it was be something that I'd been good at. I, I just sort of never really got started. I'd been wondering about it for years. If anyone's watching this is thinking, oh, maybe I could do that one, I just start. I'm just a motivational speaker right now. But if there's anything that you've been putting off doing, just start it. Because it's the hardest part. And once you get going, you can look back and you can see progress. I used to look at my channel and see one or two videos and be like, man, I can't wait until I see that that page is just full of content. You know what? I look back now and I can, and it's been one year. In one year, you could be looking back and think, I'm so glad I started that a year ago. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> shaking off the motivational speaker. Uh, all right, so my second reason, my second reason is that I had an Etsy store and while it had pretty stable conversion metrics, the traffic was fluctuating wildly and I wanted to do something that would help drive more traffic to it. And my third reason is that I wanted to be able to talk about crochet as much as I wanted without watching people's eyes glaze over and have them edge away a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, I, I wanted to have an outlet, an outlet where <laughs> Anybody who didn't want to listen didn't have to, but maybe I had something to offer. And it's really cool that, that you guys keep coming back to, to watch me ramble on. <laughs> All right, what's next for you? So in terms of the next few months, I, I already have sort of the schedule relatively locked down. I don't like lock it firmly, just in case things happen like with the crocodile. Uh, but I know that Sort of before the end of September, I'm going to be releasing that how to design your own amigurumi pattern video. I really think that it's going to help a lot of people and um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm planning that D&D series and I'm starting to think about what I want to do for Halloween. If you have any ideas, comments, help me. And um, yeah, so I intend to keep making patterns and I intend to keep growing the channel. And a big part of that has been because of you guys. So as I talked about during the process 
section of this video. This, on top of a full-time job, this is a second full-time job. This takes every moment I have spare in my life. But what makes this all worthwhile is you guys. Um, I swear, I, I reckon that the crochet community has to be the nicest corner of the internet. I keep waiting for the mean people to turn up and I might be jinxing things, but they don't seem to be here. You've all just, you're all just so positive and kind and friendly and you just always have been right from when I had like five subscribers and now I've got like 3,500 or something. So thank you for all just being the supportive, lovely people that you are. And uh, I'm gonna take a page out of Royalty Soap's book because I wanna be like her again when I grow up as though I'm not a 31 year old lady and say, I want you all to go do something nice for yourselves because you should be proud of the people that you are. That's the motivational speaker in me again, sorry. Okay, so watch this video next. It's going to show you how to make an axolotl, okay? And then I'll see you next week with a crocodile. Bye. <laughs>